I don't know why it's triple B each time. Okay. Seven B says use the given conditions to write an equation for the line in point slope form and in slope intercept form. So I'm writing the same two formulas we did like a couple of problems ago, right? Um, it's telling me that it's passing through this point, which is negative five comma negative five. And it's saying it's parallel to the line y equals negative three x plus five. And there was one very important thing that we learned about lines that are parallel. They have the what kind of slope? Same. I heard a s which sounded like an S, so I'm going to say yes. Same. Same. To my knowledge, there's a parallel one on the test, not a perpendicular. Perpendicular is the negative reciprocal, right? But if I'm asked a question and it gives me a point and it tells me it's parallel to another point, the form it wanted me to do first, right, was point slope form. Do you notice how it's kind of redundant, y'all? In a way, some problems were using the same things. So it's like if you could really get down that process, you could answer multiple questions. Okay, so the first thing it told me to do was put it in point slope form, right? So this sub one right here means that I have one point. Here's my one point. This M says that I'm going to have a slope. I'm not given a slope. But what I am given is that the line that I'm writing, this new line that I'm doing all of this work for, is going to be parallel to this line. And if I know that parallel lines have the same slope, then that negative three, that's my ilm. That's my slope because they're parallel to each other. They're going to rise or fall the exact same way. They're just different lines. So this is saying that my ilm equals three. And then that right there, that's the point that they had given me. Does that make sense? Yeah, you wanna write a line parallel to another line. Slopes are the same, use the point they give you and do all the work that we've done in previous problems. So, plugging this in, we get Y, formula says do a minus sign. And then the formula says Y sub one. If you look at Y sub one, I get negative five. Yes, Molly. <gasps> negative three. See, I start thinking like I'm on a roll and I'm like, yes, I make it all this sense and I leave off one sign. How easy it is to do it in the exam too. Like, yeah, hold on. I don't even like the way that looks because it's like, that's actually called an equivalence relation in upper level maths. Um, negative three. When you have three, when you have three lines. So thank you though. Y'all seriously call me out on that because like I'll think that I wrote a negative three and I'll continue and it will take until I get here to plug it in that then I'll realize it. But I don't want y'all to sit there confused until I catch myself, okay? So God, let me re-say that. Lines that are parallel have the exact same slope. Sign's not different. The exact same sign, exact same number, exact same everything, right? So because in this line that they give me, it's a negative three. The slope for my parallel line is also a negative three. So when I plug stuff in, now I'm at my M, y'all. I get my negative three. And then the formula says X minus. Now I look at my X sub one, which is a negative five. It goes in parentheses. In all honesty, this right here would probably confuse a lot of people more than anything else, okay? You have to write every single symbol and letter and number and anything you see here. But when you start plugging stuff in, if it also is negative, that's whenever you start putting stuff in parentheses, okay? It doesn't cancel or 86 or get rid of that negative. It's as well as, it's included with. So this wouldn't be what you square for your point slope form because we do have negative negatives. Let's go ahead and turn those into positives. You would get y plus five, and then we have equals negative three times x plus five. That is at the very end what you would square and mark as your your PS or your point slope form. Okay. So once you get to this point, um, you use this to solve for your y equals. That's your uh, slope intercept form. And again, if you ever have a number 
touching a parenthesis, it's usually going to be the very first thing you do. You've got to uh, multiply that to every single thing inside of that parenthesis. You get y plus 5 equals negative 3x, negative 15. And then I'm still not done. I want y equals, and I've got y plus 5 equals. So I've got to get rid of that plus 5. You would do the inverse, the opposite. So I'm going to subtract 5 from both sides. And I get y equals negative 3x, negative 20. So this is my slope-intercept form. That is my equation of the line. Now let me show you this. That's the one I just solved for, right? That original one was what? y equals negative 3x plus 5. This was my original line. <clears throat> and I know that the new line that I just wrote, passing through that point and parallel to this line, I know they're actually parallel to each other because they have the same slope. That right there is a way I can check myself. If I get my new line and it does not have the same slope as the line I was given, then somewhere along the lines I messed up. If I actually did write positive three, and I notice at the end that's supposed to be a uh, negative three, not what I wrote, which was accidentally a positive three, then even that would tell me, hey, I need to go back and look to see because I made a mistake somewhere. These have to match if they're parallel. If they're perpendicular, it's negative reciprocal, okay? But for the exam, we're going to do this example right here, okay? Let's do problem number eight. <laughs> B. Okay. So, um, and y'all, it kind of is about finding keywords sometimes in these problems. Like this one literally tells you to find the average rate of change. If you look in your matching problems, one on the left-hand side column says average rate of change. You're going to match that with a formula. So that's what you use in this problem, okay? Okay, so find the average rate of change of the function. Uh, my function is f of x equals x squared plus 4x, and it's telling me to find it from, this is my interval on the x-axis, and my first x value is 1, and then my second x value is 6. So it's saying that there's this function, I want to find the average rate of change, but specifically on this interval. Okay, so... <laughs> well, the average rate of change formula is exactly the same as the slope formula, but instead of writing y sub 2 minus y sub 1, we use um, function notation. So we do f of x sub 2. That's the exact same thing as writing y sub 2, okay? And we have minus, um, in the slope, it would have been what? y sub 1. So, but here we do f of x sub 1. And then we're going to put that over the difference in our x values. When we did the slope, we had two points. And um, when we were finding slope, we had two points. And we would use the slope formula to find the slope, right? Here, I'm just given a function. And I'm giving an interval, which is why I actually need to plug these into this. Um, but it's why it is very similar to the slope formula. But we have to do it this way because we're not given the two points. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to notice that on the top left uh, part of my equation, I've got f of x sub 2. I'm going to do this quickly, y'all. It's f of x sub 2, which is f of my x sub 2 is a 6. This is telling me use my function wherever there used to be an x. Now there's a 6. I've got 6 squared plus 4 times 6. That is 36 plus 24, 10, 30, 40, 50, 60, is that 60? And then my formula right here, I know I need to find the answer to this right here, which is f of x sub 1. My x sub 1 is 1, so it's actually f of 1. Okay, so now wherever there's an x, plug in a 1. So I get 1 squared plus 4 times 1, 
which is 1 plus 4, which is 5. So my 60 is this top left in the numerator, my f of x sub 2. My 5 is this right here, my f of x sub 1. Okay, whenever I get to this point right here, my x sub 2 is my 6. My x sub 1 is my 1. So now I'm going to plug all of these in. And what I get is f of x sub 2 equals 60. Formula says to subtract from that f of x sub 1, which I found to be 5, over f, I'm sorry, x sub 2, which is just this point right here, which is 6, minus x sub 1, which is 1. So 60 minus 5 is 55 over 6 minus 5 is 5 which equals 11. So the average rate of change of that function on that specific interval is 11. Does that make sense, y'all? Yeah? You are free to go. We'll do the second half of the review um, on Wednesday, okay? And make sure y'all read y'all's emails because a lot recently.